Of course you got to show your ADOS shirt. Well, in fact, let's start it. Why do you have an ADOS shirt? Well, I am at the inaugural uh, conference of the ADOS. Mm -hmm. And the starters of this ADOS uh, organization are Yvette and Antonio. Mm -hmm. And I'm very proud to be here. Mm -hmm. What brought you here? How did you find out about the conference? Oh, my daughter Stacy uh, said, we have to go to the conference, Mom. I said, of course we do. <laughs> I'll be ready when you're ready. <laughs> now, where are you from? I'm a Floridian now, uh -huh. and my my home was New York. Oh, where, Long where? Island, New York. Long Island, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. born, born in the Bronx. Whoa, 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 wait, stop right there, because I'm a Bronx child, too. Where in the Bronx were you born? Uh, Lincoln Hospital. You're kidding me. <laughs> no, Lincoln was my hospital. I was born in Marcina Hospital, but Lincoln was my hospital. So you was born in the South Bronx. Yes. South Haven Bronx. section. Yes. Wow. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm too taken oh. away. Okay, you're just blowing <laughs> no, me away. It's a, such a small world. <laughs> <laughs> okay, from the from the Bronx, you. Uh, 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 now, how'd you roll? And, and then as. Uh, <laughs> In my very young years, I lived in Saratoga Springs, New York. That's upstate New York. Yes, yes. And then when my father came out of World War II, he brought me to Manhattan to live with him and his new wife. My mother and father were divorced when I was about four or five years old. Mm -hmm. And he brought me back to Manhattan, which was his hometown. Mm -hmm. He was born and raised in Manhattan mm -hmm. in New York City. And then... Uh, I moved to uh, Long Island, mm -hmm. spent about three years in California, in L.A., Crenshaw Boulevard, and then uh, came back to New York and, li and continued to live on Long Island. I find that people traverse it, that travel a bit, they have a little bit different mentalities, you know. Uh, I'm only going, I'm, I, I, what, what did I this believe order? travel opens your mind to a lot of new new uh, cultures, new, it's a very, it's an adventure mm -hmm. to travel because you have to keep your mind open to all new things. Uh, it, the planet seems to be very small now, but, it, it, but there is so much to, uh, how shall I put it? Experience. I, I gotta think of a word. Experience, experience uh, understand. Yes, there's so much to experience. Now, it's my understanding, rumor has it, that you have a, a certain lineage that we should know about. You come from some peoples. I knew of my lineage uh, going back to my great great grandmother mm -hmm. and father on my mother's side. Mm -hmm. And I only knew of my grandfather on my father's side. Mm -hmm and my grandmother on my father's side. Uh, I had a list of names that my father gave me, and he also mentioned Gullah Geechee people. I had never heard of them before. Hey, I'm from Gullah, South, Charleston, South Carolina. Charleston, I'm sorry. Okay. yes. Charleston, South Carolina on my father's side. But I was studying my mother's side first. And I found out uh, that my great 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 grandfather was in the Revolutionary War. Mm. As a 15 year old, he went in in New York State, and uh, while he was in the uh, in the war, he was captured by the British, taken to New York City, and he was a servant to the officers in the British uh, Army. And then he was. Uh, released by the colonists and spent the rest of his time in the army and uh, how shall I put this? They had traveled to Albany on one of the skirmishes and had to stop there because the river was frozen over. They couldn't travel any further and he thought that Albany was a, a, a nice place to settle in. So when he was out of the army, he settled in Albany, New York. His name was Benjamin Lattimore. Really? Born I know that name. in 1761 in Wethersfield, Connecticut. Mm -hmm. uh, but when he settled in Albany, he was a cart man. A cart man was someone that had a cart and a little horse, 
and he picked up trash, he picked up goods, he delivered them from the river to the, to the little city, from the city to other uh, places that were close by. He did business with the government, and we have papers to show that. Uh, he also was a person that bought property. At one time, he bought property from Elizabeth, Elizabeth Schuyler Hamilton, the wife of, what was his first name? Uh, Not Alexander Hamilton. Alexander Hamilton. The treasury wife. guy that started the whole banking system. Yes. Oh. Where after he passed, they, there was debt to be paid, and she started selling off some of their properties. Mm -hmm. And we have papers to show where where they exchange property. And he uh, gave property to his sons. He had uh, two sons and a daughter. He also went to court uh, to get his uh, wartime pension. They weren't going to give it to him if he was a runaway slave. So he had to prove that he was manumitted. He was, the word is manumitted. And uh, he took a lawyer to court with him, and he was able to uh, get eighty dollars in in pay and two hundred forty dollars in back pay. He also made out a will. That's something that everyone should do. He made out a will. He made out a will, leaving all his assets to his children, with a line that said. One of his sons was to watch over his daughter's assets so that no husband could take it away from her. Oh, smart man. Mm -hmm. uh, he, he also uh, belonged to a church that housed uh, Harriet Tubman. Hmm. And uh, also there was Frederick Douglass who used to stop there and make speeches. There was a uh, gentleman named Schuyler, another Schuyler, who was a ferryman, ferry boatman, who would watch the river from his vantage point up high. He had a home on a hill. And when the bounty count uh, people were coming up the river, he would warn the people in the church, and they would hide Harriet Tubman in a little corner closet where nobody would find her. Do you remember the name? Do you know the name of the church? It's uh, the Israel AME, I'm not sure, it's the Baptist church, is it the Baptist church? I'm not sure at this point, I'm sorry. But what, this was in upstate New York? This is upstate New York, there's a marker, it's a historic site, and it's on Hamilton Street. And all the uh, connected houses on the other side of the church are all historic sites. Okay. So we even got to uh, speak to the uh, two of the staff in the church, and we got to speak to the pastor. He told us he always talks about Benjamin uh, Lattimore in his speeches on Sundays. Mm -hmm. So this is that was really an eye opener. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. I, I want. I don't want to. I mean, if you can talk, I, I'm. I'm listening. I'm listening. 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 I, I, I forget things, you know. And I listen. No, you don't. Out. No, you do not forget what's important. You have what we call a selective memory, and your selections are amazing. Oh, I, I want to mention this. Mm -hmm. I really recommend that everyone does their DNA. Mm -hmm. I knew that when I was growing up in in Saratoga Springs that I was just a child. I had no idea of my background. My family was from Saratoga, but no one spoke of families, uh, backgrounds, or anything. I used to go and visit my two aunts on the other side of town on Sunday afternoons. We would do needlepoint. They'd give me a little cup of tea or milk or chocolate. No family business. I only knew those two aunts and my Uncle George, who came out of World War II and who uh, treated me to so many great things, uh, that was my mother's youngest brother. And I, I tell you, it's such a miracle. Life is such a miracle. I didn't find out where my uncle lived. I always thought he lived in Saratoga Springs, New York. I didn't find out till about a year ago that he lived in Queens, New York, 
and I could have been visiting him in his later years, and my family could have been visiting him and getting to know my mother's younger brother. Uh, I also want to say that I didn't find out uh, my exact DNA until my my son said, Mom, we have to do our DNA. Oh, well, yeah, Mom, we should do our DNA. When my results came back, I found out I was 50% African, 42% European, UK, a hint of, uh, of Native American, and a hint of Jewishness. What a revelation. I knew... I can say that I knew I was black when I lived in Manhattan with my father, but I didn't know how much. And I remember when I lived with him at one time, in the, we lived in the Riverton development on 135th Street and Madison Avenue. Okay, I know what that is, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I was walking out of the I guess now they call it Lincoln Projects. Wait a second, Riverton? Okay, there was I the Lincoln Projects, what? and then there was the Riverton Development. Okay, that's right. I know By the is. Metropolitan Life Insurance Company. Mm -hmm. And I remember walking out of there one day, going up to the subway, and somebody was yelling, Yalla, hey, Yalla, gal. Mm -hmm. That really was the first time that I had uh, race pointed out to me and color of skin that mattered. But how old were you then? I was in junior high then, mm -hmm. so I was about 14, yeah. 15, mm -hmm. 14 years old, I believe. Mm -hmm. That was my first uh, touch of uh, a little uh, racism. But uh, my big, my biggest, I had two big touches later on in life. When we were coming, when we went to California, we used Route 80, the northern route. Mm -hmm. Coming back, we used Route 66, the southern route. We stopped in Albuquerque with the children, we stayed over, we bathed the children, fed them, and everything was fine. And then we traveled on to St. Louis. We got to St. Louis, and, I, and we saw a sign, vacancy, on a motel. So I went in to check us in, and he said, oh yes, there's a vacancy. And he looked out at the car, and he looked and saw my husband and my children in the car. He said, no, there's no vacancy. You have to go to the other side of town. And here we were, tired, hungry, children needed changing and, and whatever. And we were told we couldn't stay there. My second big uh, thing with racism was when, when my children were older, and we moved into a, a house in Baldwin, Long Island, New York, New York. And the fella that that signed my uh, lease was the husband of the homeowner. And so I signed the lease, and he was doing something in the kitchen, and everything was just fine. The children and I moved in. The following Monday, I got a phone call at my job that I had to move. And I said, why? I just moved in. I just transferred all my phone and water bills and all this. Oh, you just have to move. And then I found out it was because the neighbors didn't want us there in South Baldwin. So you see, you can't, what I can say is you can't judge a book by its cover. People see me, sometimes they know, sometimes they don't. But I've suffered along with many, many people that are of a darker hue than I am. And I want to say, just be brave. There'll be better days. And I know through ADOS it's coming. And we do deserve our rep reparations. Thank you. Thank you also. I just have to do this. I'm sorry. There's this thing that says when you meet somebody, if you touch them, you know what I mean, you have a little bit of their molecules, whatever have you. For instance, I've shaken hands, I've shaken hands with Richard Leakey, and he's he, he's the one who discovered Lucy, you know. So if I touch oh, yeah, you, Lucy. that that we we come all the way back, that molecules, you know, goes all the way back to Lucy, you know. So mm -hmm. I want to just end this, but I want to just give you a hug if I possibly can. That would be wonderful for yes, me. Yes, you may. Okay, surely. Can you hold this, please? Yes. I just want to. Stand up with you. My name is Anthony. Anthony. Okay, what's your name? Joan. Joan. Oh, I love you so much. Oh, this, this is been so wonderful. Oh, it's just so great. Oh, yeah, okay. this is great.
ne you never know until the person tells their story what okay. their experience is Yes. Okay, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. You're welcome.